Welcome back. This is our final episode from Crete. Join us as we make the most of our last two days by visiting a mysterious peninsula, an ancient city dedicated to the Greek goddess Artemis, and explore the charming city of Rathamo. Welcome to The Right Life. We're Catherine and Edward, a married couple based in London with a passion for travel and experiencing the world together. On our channel, we share our adventures from uncovering hidden gems to learning about new cultures and discovering amazing historical sites. Join us as we explore the world. How are you feeling? I'm not walking just anything. Trying to tie you out. <laughs> so I fall asleep? I was like snoring last night, which is good. Hey! After breakfast in Hanya, Edward got his shop on before we headed out to explore the Akratori Peninsula. Kelly Mara. That's the cup of a carpenter. This is a reconstructed Minoan kitchen. I wonder what these bowls are for. It does say here that um, the residues in the bowls show that people ate cooked cereals and combined legumes and vegetables with meat. They drank wine mixed with honey and drinks of a similar consistency to beer. They also ate dried figs. Yeah, These curious looking flattened pots were common grave goods used for storing perfumed oils. For your trip into the afterlife, you want to smell good. So here most of the items are made out of glass. All range from the first to second century AD. And then as you go back in time, the oil lamps there, it's all this in clay is from the third and fourth century BC. No matter how much time goes by, apparently kids will always want to be pulling a toy car on a string. This one here is made out of clay between the 9th and 10th century BC. I've got some Cretan coins here. The head of Artemis is the head of Apollo. These coins are from 300 BC. It's the head of Zeus. These glass jars, items one to seven, are ointment vessels. I'm not sure how you'd get ointment out of number five. It looks a bit like I'd probably break that if I picked it up. This is the second statue of uh, Emperor Hadrian that we've um, found on the island of Greek. This one was actually damaged in a fire during the Second World War, but the head has remained almost perfectly intact. So they've mounted it in, uh, in, a, in quite a nice way where they've sort of shown sort of the overall size of what the statue would have been like and they haven't infilled anything with modern day plaster or anything like that. I believe that he's quite revered emperor on this island and he's uh, seen as a fair and just ruler and obviously he's famous for building the wall and everything. We're now in sort of the second century AD. So we're at the Archaeological Museum in Hanya. It's about uh, two kilometres from our hotel. If you're going to come here, there is car parking. <laughs> we didn't know that, so we're on a side street, so there's probably not much left of the car now. It's um, six euros to get in. It's a brand new, state-of-the-art building, um, and there's a EU flag everywhere, so I'm assuming that they've uh, chipped some money in. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot in the museum. Um, we probably knocked it out in less than sort of 40 minutes and it all ranges from um, sort of the, the early Minoan period from sort of 2000 BC all the way up to the early uh, Roman um, period in, in sort of 200 AD. So yeah, it's a good museum, nice light and airy, but um, the one in uh, Heraklion is probably better. Uh, it's got more stuff in it and it's... Uh, it's uh, a lot more of a time to get round it and all that kind of thing but um, yeah good where are we going next? I think we're just going to go for a drive uh, there's a peninsula that you can go to with a beach so we might go and check that out the thing about Greece we were very concerned about getting our car in here in front of this sign and in front of this 
driveway here. And this guy's just come along and clearly does not care. So why in the world should we? The first beach we found didn't work out, so we ended up at the Holy Trinity Monastery, which had a wine museum and shop. Edward's found the grape crusher. Hey. You found the grape crusher. So we had to have bought the uh, trip to the peninsula beach because there was some insane switchback road. That was definitely come to the winery. Calm our nerves a bit. No video allowed. I did it anyway. Well, we've had a bit of a happy accident. We attempted to get to a beach that was just kind of scary. So then we thought, oh, we'll go to a vineyard. And somehow this vineyard is actually right part of the Holy Trinity Monastery, um, built in the 17th century. We are on the Akrotiri Peninsula. Prettiest Uzo body, but oh, this is this is actually a Rafi bottle on the beach. One Rafi a day. I love it. You're really selling it to the export <laughs> market. Isn't it? It's funny. It actually doesn't taste bad when I'm first drinking it, but then there's this big hit, which I don't like at all. And afterwards, I'm like, oh, I could have another. Thank God I'm driving. We made our way back to Hanya for a nap before dinner. It's not being on the Atkins diet. It's like, what do we have? Um, I don't know what the it is. It's goat in a bowl with cheese on it. I'm sure it's lovely, but, you know. Goat in a bowl with cheese. Yeah. You heard it here first. Basically, I ordered the chickpea for starter, and there was like no delivery mechanism for it, so it was just a plate full of hummus. So, you know, no bread or anything like that. And now we've got this lamb dish, which looks and smells amazing, but there's no rice or clay or, you know, I don't know, you know, vine leaves with something in it. It's just a big bowl of meat. So. I think the food in Hanya has been a bit hit and miss compared to Herculeon. Yeah, so so having actually served up some of the food onto our little plates, there were actually some uh, chips and uh, some aubergine and all that. But um, it's all underneath the meat, so it's basically a big bowl. Of mush. After dinner, I lost Edward to a football game. I've come for a bit of a pre-breakfast stroll through Hania. Hania is one of those towns that just sort of invites you to explore. However, this morning's walk has been a little bit louder than expected. It's not early, early. It's, I only left about 8.30 and there's people delivering stuff everywhere. So I'm constantly like hopping out of the way. Behind me are the 7th century walls built, by the, built during the Byzantine rule. There's about a kilometer left standing, which is a lot of a really big wall running through this town. Once the Byzantines uh, were kind of taken over by the Venetians in the 12th century, the Venetians used it to build their forts up against it and around it, but it wasn't quite the fortification they needed anymore. So people started to build their homes and, and storage. And as time went by, the wall fell into a bit of disrepair, but um, it was used as a bomb shelter during World War II. Look, it's a pomegranate tree. I've never seen them growing before. Can you pick them? I mean, it's in someone's yard, I'm not going to pick it, but how does it work? We 
We don't want any. Oh, come on. Welcome to our Airbnb apartment. This is the living room. Anything you like about it? It's very bright and airy. And they've got a TV in the corner from 19, early 2000s. This way it goes through into the kitchen. This is the bathroom and toilet. The shower is excellent. And this is the bedroom where all the sleeping happens. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a nice little writing desk there, which I didn't use. And a nice little wardrobe there, which I didn't use. And some side lamps and a TV, which I didn't use. And then outside, you have this amazing uh, little plunge pool, which I did use. It's freezing cold when I got in there. I imagine in, October, in, uh, in August it's probably very nice, but October uh, doesn't get enough sun. So how was your second ever Airbnb experience? Uh, it was good, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, the only thing I'd say is there's no parking. Mm. So we've got to lug everything. 10 minutes down the road but other than that it's fine yeah. but I think that's the whole island isn't it there's no parking it's not geared up for a, everyone having a car yeah exactly this morning we have come to Aperta which is one of the most which was one of the most significant city states of Crete this goes all the way back to the Minoan times and was first built around 3500 BC. Of course, the Minoans left around 1700 BC, and from that comes the Greeks, and then this once again became an important city. So important, in fact, during Roman times that it minted its own coins, they had their own industry. They're quite well fortified up here on the side of a mountain. So let's go check it out and maybe find Edward because I have misplaced him again. So behind me are the baths, which were built in the second century AD, and then furthermore, the more were built after the earthquake of 365 BC. So if you're familiar with our other videos, you know that we've been to see a few Roman baths, one in London, one in Spain, and now we have one here in Greece, or Crete, I should say. And this looks like where the, uh, the fire is drawn. These on the outside look like what's left of the plunge pool. There's probably different rooms one to get changed in, one to get hot, and then come through into the plunge pool. So this is the second bathhouse. These baths were in use between 1st century BC to the 4th century AD. Not sure what this site is here. It's got some steps coming down. And there's no sign. I have been looking for Edward for hours. Well, for 20 minutes. And I finally saw him just go walk around that corner over there. And the last day of the holidays decided to rain. This is the Roman cistern, but there's no steps. And, uh, yeah, I ain't gonna do it because I won't get back up. I lack the coordination. It's a dead end back there. So now I've got to brave the rain. All these people are running. Still don't know what this building is, but this is the most intact building on, on the site. That's why I like Crete. The rain has stopped almost as soon as it's begun. Plus, you know, English, sort of used to it. Stones to protect treacherous now, though. Luckily, I've got me uh, Claire Rainers on. Not having the best luck weather wise here. Just got stuck in that Roman cistern for about 10 minutes. Still can't find Edward, still raining a bit. Well, what is interesting about this city is that this was the city of Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. 
This is another part of the Roman system. So you see how ginormous it is. Pretty much runs under the entirety of this settlement at the well the top half of it anyway. It's this Roman engineering that's been here 2,000 years. Look who I finally found. <laughs> here we are sitting at the amphitheatre. The rain has come again. It's quite a substantial amphitheatre. I'm up in the uh, up in the nosebleed seats at the moment. Anyway, we're gonna have a quick mosey down there, try not to die slipping on the stones. So we're behind the back of the amphitheatre now, and this looks like where the players would uh, prepare. I don't really know if it's used to do plays or the more traditional killing of Christians <laughs> and killing tigers and all the, all the good stuff they like to do back then. I've been surprised how many people were there. That's quite a good site. Yeah, it, it, I think it is one of the most important ones. It's a good day trip from Mathaman or from Hania. This one seems a bit more polished, doesn't it? Yes. Weather's uh, improved, isn't it? Our last city of this trip was Rathaymo. After a wander, we ended up in the garden at the Limonokopos restaurant for a late lunch. Lovely lunch. What's this place called? Oh, like a kippa something. Lemon kippos. Lemon octopus. Lemon octopus? It's easy to eat, so. <laughs> It's lovely. What about the old uh, the new Zach that's been on lately? Oh yeah, I probably can't even use this. This person has done an absolutely bang up job at parking. For the last night of this trip, we are in Rathamo, and we are staying at the beautiful Fonte de Oro Hotel. And I tell you, I wish we had another night here. So let me show you around a bit. See all of our crap piled up in the corner, but this is a lovely old building, fantastic fireplace here, lovely kitchen area. So we've got a bathroom off of the kitchen, which was very nice, big shower. There's various panels like this around the room, and they actually control all of the lights which is a little bit confusing for us to try and get used to. Lovely seating area here. And I really like these lights. They're very cool. Of course we have a TV. The cool thing about the TV is that it spins. So you can watch it on the couch. You can watch it on the bed. It's massive closet space. Only here one night, so we didn't really use it. Oh, look who's here. Hey. Tell them about the best part of our room. What's the best part of our room? You're sitting on it. Oh, the balcony. Yeah, it's very nice. It's a lovely balcony. We were out here last night with a couple of beers. Playing the cards. You know, playing cards, which we don't know how to play cards. If somebody was to teach us a card game, that'd be great because we don't know any. We were playing war. And I tried to talk Edward into Go Fish. We've got this lovely view, pomegranate tree, other people's balconies. And last night when we were sitting out here, there was some guy practicing his guitar. Do you want to get home? I'm ready to go home. I've had enough. I'm sick to death of this place now. I've had enough of all the good weather, the good food, the friendly people, the picturesque walks, all the amazing experiences I've had. I've just had enough. I'm ready to go back to London where it's wet and rainy and people are miserable. Come on, let's get out of this hell hole. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess. After our friendly host served us a seemingly never-ending breakfast, we headed off to explore the local market and charming streets. 
There's a lot more to do here than we had time for, which just means we'll get to come back to Crete someday. Of course, we can't possibly just leave Crete without trying to eke out every minute before our flight. So we have come to the ruins at Tisilis. These are built between 15th and 16th century BC, which means these are late Minoan. And there was eventually a fire and newer built structures were put on top of the Minoan ruins. And today, these mansion houses are what's left. So let's have a wander around. It's not so big here. We're actually very close to the airport. Got a pomegranate tree here. There's some really beautiful ones right in the middle. But you can see where it's split. One of them splitting open. Does that mean it's ready to eat? Yeah. Some real, there's some real day of the triffids stuff going on there. They don't look very nice when they split open. What's around the corner? I'm like Indiana Jones in sandals. And stairs. A pot of gold to pay for this holiday. And I, I found a snail. This is my veranda. Welcome in. I like the sun, so I wanted to make sure uh, that you can get optimal sun here. This is the kitchen. As you can see, I've got a fireplace there. And this room here is my dining room. But yeah, so these are my wine jars. You can see we had, a, we had a really big party last night and they're empty. And there's a lizard, his name's Frank. He just went under there. I tell you what, they weren't very good at house building, but they could sure build a great outside toilet. This has been our car. She's a thirsty beast. You pay for this. All too soon, we were at the airport and headed home. Thank you so much for exploring Crete with us. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a comment below. There are more adventures to come. Are you not entertained? It's like a prerequisite now every time I go to a Roman amphitheater. <laughs> Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life for the next. Do they sure like so